want to talk about this virtual front desk sales associate. So listen to all those terms. Virtual front desk is in there so you can understand the role that we're helping to fill. Yet most importantly, the most important term in there is the last two terms, the sales associate. So I want to talk a little bit about today about what uh, Todd Wickstrom and I have created. And we've talked about this for a while. As you may know, I've, you know, I had, I had something like this, was working on something like this about eight years ago, but couldn't get any traction in the physical therapy world. Because think about the world eight years ago. Nobody thought this was important. Nobody saw this as an integral part of their business. And as the years have gone by, with a, a lot of changes in healthcare, with a lot of information flowing around out there, people see that actually the team, your team members, are important. And that in order to run a successful business that thrives on creating patient success, that you must understand the role of all your team members, right? Your whole business is a team, and then all the team members within and on that team play a role in patient success, which flows to business success, which flows to personal success for everybody else. So you guys have heard that, and I want you guys to understand that's where this virtual front desk sales associate stems from. This is where this idea was birthed, is the fact that there are team members, right, that have important roles throughout the company. And the better you understand the patient life cycle, the better you understand the patient experience that you want to create, then you start seeing things like a virtual front desk sales associate as a key component to your team. So here's the big asterisk. If you do not understand your patient's life cycle and the experience that you can create, then you're gonna have a difficult time understanding where this virtual front desk sales associate fits. Now, part two of this is probably just as important. About a month ago, I talked about the three roles that your front desk actually plays and how this term front desk needs to become obsolete because it's a misnomer. When we say our front desk, there's actually only one person of those three that actually should be at the front desk. So by saying front desk, we're minimizing the role of the two other potential team members, right? So the three roles your front desk fills in your business, whether you understand this or not, is they are the voice of the company, right? The sales portion. They are the face of the company, which is the retention, and we could argue customer service part of the business. I don't like that term customer service, but it's something that you're probably familiar with, so you, something you can better think about. But we have the sales associate, the face of the company, or sorry, voice of the company. We have the retention slash customer service person, which is the face of the company. And then we have the back office. Those are the people that are tasked with all the insurance and the paperwork that so much of the face and the voice of the company are having to deal with, which inhibit their ability to do their job successfully. So what most practices, and by the way, I'd say dental practices, MD practices, and physio practices have done, they feel, they know they need people to answer the phone. They know they need people to work on retention and be the face of the company. And they know they need people to do the paperwork tasks. So what do they do? They just hire for all that, drop everybody at the front desk, stir the pot with all the tasks, everything that has to be done and say, go do that. And if that's not your front desk, then cheers to you. Yeah, that's the majority of front desks out there, probably 99.9% .9 of them, right? And we ask the people that are good at the sales to be doing paperwork. And then if the phone happens to ring, yeah, get the phone and manage that. Then we ask the people that are good with retention and customer service to be part of the sales team, which by the way, they're not a good part of that sales team. They're good at dealing with retention of the people in front of them. We ask the sales people to do a little of each. And again, we get this mishmash and we get to this multitasking issue, which means people are doing a lot of little tasks poorly. And that's the current state of most front desk. It is what it is. And you get that idea pretty quickly when you call a healthcare practice or you walk into a healthcare practice, right? There's a lot of paper pushing, a lot of phones ringing, a lot of, shall we say, less than pleasant people in the office. And that is a clear sign of the owner, the practice manager, the people in charge not understanding this triple role of this front desk 
team members. Okay? If you understand your patient's life cycle, if you understand the experience you want to create, if you understand that truly the front desk is three roles, not one, so you don't post a job for a front desk admin, you would post a job for a salesperson, you would post a job for a customer service person, or you would post a job for a back office admin, right? To fill any of those three roles of which you then may call your front desk team members, but really even one of those is a back office team member traditionally, right? So, so if you understand that, then this virtual front desk sales associate will explode your business. Because here's the issue, when you start to see that your front desk has three roles to serve, the ones that were usually poorest are least prepared to hire, to train, to onboard, and to hold accountable is the salesperson. Because that's the role we least understand. We understand the retention part, the customer service, right? That's all the cancels, the rescheduling, the copay collection stuff, all that. That's it. And traditionally, when we think of the front desk, that's all we're thinking about. Is this person that manages retention. And I'm like, well, before you can get to retention, you got to get to sales. And then we also have, again, the admin, the back office person doing all the other things. And we typically think of the retention role and the back office admin role as the front desk, right? And we understand those roles, yet we don't understand the sales role, the entry point to the business, the person who is literally the voice of the company who starts to build a relationship with this potential patient that will last throughout their entire life cycle. That will make re the retention person's job easier and will make the back office person's job easier, right? Less cancels, less snow shows, less billing problems. Because why? Because then you understand that front desk sales associate or virtual front desk sales associate is responsible for setting and managing expectations, for building more trust, for setting the provider up for success, to be a problem solver. This front desk sales associate doesn't make more money than anybody else. It's not a, it's not a uh, more difficult job to do when you find the right person. How do you find the right person? You post for the right job. You write a job description for this, right? And again, you can see where I'm going with all this, right? The, it, this is hard work. It's expensive. It's difficult work. You have to find the person. You have to go through the interview process. You have to understand the role to set up the training and the onboarding, and then you have to hold them accountable. All those things I just said, the virtual front desk sales associate program that Todd Wickstrom and I started does that. We do the job posting. So we have these people. We hire them, right? They're our employees. They become part of your business. They become part of your practice. They are involved in your team meetings virtually. You meet with them weekly to talk about their KPIs, their accountabilities. Here's the beauty of this. So Todd and I realized we didn't want to wait for you to try to figure out how to hold these people accountable. So we said, look, here's what we'll hold them accountable for. And they'll report back to you every week. So again, if we're hiring salespeople and we're training them, they're going to want to know what their accountability is. So their dashboard is what they report back to you, right? How many calls came in, right? How many people did they get onto the schedule? How many outbound calls did they make? It's Facebook ads or, or workshops or things like that, right? Every week, every week, missed calls, leads, inbound, outbound, schedule, conversion rate, all that, they report back to you. Is that something that you're currently collecting from your front desk? Is that something your front desk team can report to you? We've also built in that they're going to manage the potential cancels, so I call it the reschedules, right? So the goal here is that the front desk, the virtual front desk sales associate, which actually what we created is what we're calling our virtual front desk sales systems, right? Because what I just explained to you was the systems. And the onboarding, the training, the hiring, that's all part of the systems for a virtual front desk sales system. The call log, we bring the call log, they use your EMR, they do all the follow-ups, right? Their job is to be the entry point into your healthcare practice and to grow your practice. Their job is to be the entry point into your business and grow your practice. So we have set them up to do that. And the only way you're going to know if they're doing that is we bring the KPIs and the accountabilities and they meet with you weekly. Here's the other beauty of, of what they do. When they're tracking the calls and in my process, right, in my training, right, these are people with sales skills already. So 
they don't need a lot of training. They need training on how to manage a call into a healthcare office, yet that is not the most difficult part of the job. The most difficult part of the job is understanding the sales, right? How to sell. And so that's where they come from. That's the experience they're bringing. And then we teach them and we work with them on how to manage the front end of a, a physio office, a dental office, a medical office. And so then again, they are tracking all their leads and they're tracking how they came about to call you. So part of the meetings every week with the practice manager, the front desk manager, the marketing manager, the clinic manager, the office manager, the owner is the marketing results. So now all of a sudden the front, virtual front desk sales associate has become an integral part of your marketing team. And if you've watched some of my past videos recently, I talk about the combination of sales and marketing, right? Marketing and sales, how they work together for practice success. Well, our sales associate, we make sure they're doing what they need to do to make your marketing more successful. All right? So when they talk about number of leads, they talk about where the leads came from. When they talk about conversion rate, the people that have scheduled, they talk about where they came from. When they talk about people that did not schedule, they talk about where they came from. So again, this role is going to be an integral, I love that word, part of your practice success. All right, we've talked about attraction, sales, excite, retain, referral, right? You guys have seen that. If you haven't seen that, go to my web, theclientexperiencecompany.com and go look at my very first blog post there. I talk about the flow of a business. Everybody usually has the attraction marketing part. They usually have some part of the retention set in, but they forget that oh so important step in the middle, which I call the linchpin step, that actually holds everything together, and that's the sell step. Sales should be reporting back to marketing, and sales should be making everything downstream easier. And when sales reports to marketing, it can even make sales easier. What do we call that? I call that growth. More new patients on your schedule who arrive, pay, stay, and do your marketing with you. Then the information you're fed is how to increase the ROI on your marketing program. Hey, Jerry, we had 10 leads from this one source, workshop, doctor, anything, word of mouth referral, right? So that you can go out and spend more money for a greater return on that source. Hey, Jerry, 10 of these leads this week who came from this one source called but did not schedule. So you say, I'm not going to market there anymore. And I say, time out. You got the lead. You got the call. So what part of that, right? Is it the salesperson? Or do we have to put together better content? Because I wouldn't kill any marketing program that brought me 10 leads, but I might have to change the language, right? So you sit down with the virtual front desk sales associate and you talk about the conversation that these people are having, right? What are we missing out on here? And then you tweak that marketing that brought those 10 leads and now six of them convert next month, bingo, right? So you spend your money your marketing dollar becomes more valuable based on the ROI. I love that word. Marketing should have an ROI on it. Right? There's some things you do for brand awareness. That's cool. But yet, what leads, or what source, sorry, what is the source of the lead that converts the most? What is the source of the lead that calls the most, right? They all have answers. What is the source of the leads that scheduled the least? All of those are answers you need that you're probably not measuring now that the virtual front desk sales associate understands the value of that because the better the marketing is, the more successful they can be and the more successful you will be there for. This virtual front desk sales associate is, um, again, something that Todd Wixom and I have been talking about for a while. And then COVID, for whatever reason, um, we could go down a couple paths, but COVID, for whatever reason, Got a lot more people talking about it. Um, so Todd and I said, maybe this is the time to roll it out. Because we had been talking about this for a while. Rather than having you spend the money and time to write up a job description that you hope is right, to interview and potentially hire the right person, the wrong person, go through this onboarding, go through this training, and then find out two months later they're the wrong person, and then start all over again, we said, why don't we just take that? So think about the money, time, and energy you spent just to get that person into the seat. We do that. Then think about the training and the onboarding once that person's in that seat. We do that, right? This is not a, this is not a hey, we'll put someone in your seat on Monday process, by the way. This is a process. We have an intake form that you fill out. Then 
once you're ready to go and you say, yep, we're ready, then there's another intake form to be filled out because we want to know as much as possible because we've identified what people are and aren't doing that are, that are successful. So we're not going to drop someone in the seat who's not prepared to be successful in your business, in your practice. You could be a brand new clinic looking for an admin, right? A front desk sales associate. Sorry, I say the admin. That is, that's wrong. Strike that, edit that out. You could be a front brand new clinic looking for someone who's going to grow your company, virtual front desk sales associate. You could be multiple clinics and you could be saying, look, we need to take the load off of our front desk, the, the sales load off of our front desk, so they can be the customer service retention people that we actually hired them to be. And I'm like, cool, I've got your sales. I got your voice of the company. You've got the face of the company. Maybe you made a mistake, maybe you didn't, and you have to own the fact that you hired a bunch of customer service people. And I say, cool, we keep them. You don't have to fire anybody. You need those people. Because the virtual front desk sales associate is going to help grow the company. And is gonna make sure people arrive uh, ready to pay, stay, and do the marketing with you. So this is part of that onboarding process with you, right? Then we go through these questions and we look at your front desk efficiencies, right? What are you guys doing currently with intakes? How are you guys currently getting new patients into the system, right? What promises are being made? What expectations are being managed? Do we know their goals? Do they know that they are scheduled with an expert who will tell them what's going wrong, who will give them a plan of care, right? What about the welcome emails, right? So this is all phase two of that client life cycle. We own phase two. The virtual front desk sales associate owns phase two of your client's life cycle. And that is the phase that I've been preaching about for 10 years now. And that phase two is the least understood phase in your business. You're doing a good job on phase three and you're probably doing a pretty good job on phase one, which is the marketing. But it's that phase two, it's the customer contact to arrival that everybody's dropping the ball on. We're owning that now. I've got your person hired. I got your person trained. I got your person ready to deliver that person to phase three who will arrive, pay, stay, and do your marketing with you, right? Todd's working on all the team stuff, and I'm working on all the clinic, all the intakes, right? How are we going to manage these phone calls? How, by the way, how do we manage the phone calls to our virtual associate, right? We're doing all the work on that for you. We're bringing you team members who you need on your team to build a more successful business, right? So if you understand your patient's life cycle, if you understand the experience you want to create, if you understand that the further upstream you go in your patient life cycle, the bigger impact that team member has on the business, the front desk person is pretty far up the ecosystem, right? And that they have the ability to deliver a person who is ready and prepared to get better with the person they're sitting across from, right? Then we set the, our virtual front desk sales associate sets the providers up for success. And that's part of that phase two. That's one of the three objectives of phase two. Start to build a relationship that will last throughout their entire life cycle with the company. Be a problem solver, set the provider up for success. So everything you've heard me preaching, everything you've heard me teaching, we've just said, look, let's just hire and train these people ourselves and drop them in the seat. Again, and they are not dropped in the seat until they are completely ready, till you understand the process and that they understand your process, right? So there's general training, just so you know. <clears throat> it's about a 30-day process. They do general training, and then once you sign up with us, we take them through specific training for your clinic, for your intake, for your phone calls, for your directions, for your email, all of it. This is gonna be big. It's been needed. It should have been embraced a while back. Shrug my shoulders. Now you're ready for it. Now you've been hearing, now you understand that it's not just the providers and that a great front desk sales associate, the face of the company helps to, sorry, sorry, let's go back. The voice of the company actually sets the face of the company up for success, that sets the provider up for success. Again, how many steps before that provider, right? We're always trying to deliver someone to the provider and the provider has to go straight up, right? Phase two, trust, 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 decrease fear, decrease doubt, 
decreased in certainty. So by the time they're in front of that provider, that provider just has to do what they went to school to do. And again, what we're doing with this virtual front desk sales associate is everything you've heard me preach forever. But instead of trying to turn your front desk hires into a sales associate, we just said, we'll hire the sales associate. And then again, they become part, they're our employee, but they become part of your team. Again, they attend your team meetings, they, uh, they report back to you on their KPIs, of which we will tell you what their KPIs are. And I have yet to run into anybody that is, that is grabbing the KPIs that we will report. You may have one or two other things, yet I haven't run into anybody who has the list that we have that they will report back to you. And if you think about it, think about a great sales associate. It's what they're accountable for. And when you look at your current team, the accountabilities, again, when you throw everybody into the same pot and you mix up, mix up all those tasks, you're like, what are their accountabilities? Well, again, if you break them out into the sales role, the voice of the company, the retention role, the face of the company, and the back office admin role, now all of a sudden the accountabilities jump out at you and become pretty straightforward. So, virtual front desk sales associate. You should see more and more information coming forward on that. We have uh, two people placed currently. So um, I will just say, if you have thoughts, ideas, questions, you can always uh, reach out, respond in the comments. You can private message me. Everybody pretty much knows where to reach me these days. You can private message me here. You can private message me on Instagram. You can DM me on Twitter. You can put a question or thought in the comment. All right. So virtual front desk sales associate, they are going to fill a role very high upstream in your ecosystem to make everybody's life easier further downstream, right? The front desk person, the providers, the billing team, everybody. And they are going to be trained in the essential functions of selling. And then they're going to be trained in what you need within your company so they can be successful delivering on the KPIs that I mentioned. Cheers all.